Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, today I'm going to be talking about the Gypsy Gripper, another quilt that I started last night, of course, um, the Outback Wife Fabrics, the book review will be for Sewn Animal Heads, I'll be doing a demo for attaching clear vinyl to any fabric, and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness, thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, so thanks so much for joining us on this lovely Sunday if you're in the U.S. Of course, it's Memorial Day weekend, so a lot of people have off tomorrow, so I hope you enjoy your long weekend. I saw everyone in the chat beforehand, some first-time viewers and first-time live viewers, so thanks so much for watching. I see Melissa. Melissa, I see you in there. Donna, thanks so much for joining us again, Donna. And uh, just as a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also as a reminder, everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description of the chat. So if you're curious to find out more about any of the notions fabrics or projects, just check that link in the description and it'll take you to a website where you can find out more about that product or project. Okay, my favorite part as always is the notion of the week and this week I purchased two, they're sort of ruler grips, so I'll show you on my small ruler. So this is a ruler attached with suction which is really nice because it doesn't have a sticker that you can only put in place once. And this, the company that makes these is the Gypsy Gripper, and these come in several different sizes depending on the size of your ruler. So this is my nine and a half inch ruler. It's got the handle with the gripper right here, um, and it's really easy to reposition. So I'm gonna show you in the side view right now how easy it is to position this ruler. So I've got my big 24 inch ruler right here and this is the bigger handle with the two suctions. So I believe this is for rulers that are 12 and a half inches or larger. So it's really easy to activate the suction. So first you just press down lightly till this portion of the handle kind of comes down and then push down with these purple tabs. So this is a little bit, needs a little bit more strength for this part. But once you do that, as you can see, you can pick up the ruler with the handle and it's not coming loosened anytime soon. So it's really easy to release the suction so you just pull up those purple tabs one more time and then there's kind of little wings right here on the, the white suction so you just pull those if need be and then that handle releases so really nice to keep either size of that handle in your sewing room depending on what size rulers you have um, you might want that smaller handle that I showed you at first but um, you can just keep it because you can reposition it on different rulers um, it's a really nice tool to have in the sewing room and it makes it really easy for cutting. So we just started using these um, about a week and a half ago for cutting cork and I was cutting out a lot of fabric last night and I used that smaller gripper and it was really nice. It was nice having something to hold on to and I felt like the ruler wasn't really slipping around on me. Not that it normally does, but it just felt a little nicer having that handle and it's got like a little rubber grip on the top as well. So again, the company is called the Gypsy Gripper and as always link in the description if you'd like to find out more and like I mentioned there are several sizes of this gripper and I think there's an even smaller one than that first one that I showed you for really small rulers as well. All right um, I got a new quilt pattern in the, in the mail yesterday. Someone linked to this pattern actually in my Facebook group because obviously I'm a huge Tulip Pink fan so um, I purchased this pattern. It's called Spinning Rail Fence um, from Shabby Fabrics. So Shabby Fabrics sells the patterns, standalone patterns, as well as quilt kits um, with the, the fabrics to make this exact quilt top. I have tons of Tula Pink All-Stars and Tula Pink Solids, so I just bought the quilt pattern by itself. Um, but I cut out all the fabrics for the quilt yesterday and I spent a few hours this morning piecing the blocks. So I've got all my blocks finished. I'll show you in the side view um, what exactly I needed to cut for this quilt because it came together really, really nicely and easily. Where's the first one that I want to show you? Okay, so basically everything needed for the block is cut in 21 inch long strips and then cut down to these squares. So the piecing comes together really, really fast. Um, I 
made my blocks according to the picture on the cover because I really loved that quilt. And so the next step after piecing all those strips is to cut them into, sorry, piece them into sections. So four of those smaller blocks that I just showed you make this one big block. And as you can see, um, they're oriented in different positions. So I used this block sort of placed on a diagonal with my nine inch ruler and I cut the finished blocks, which look like this. And so you can see how that ruler ended up cutting um, the fabric right through the diagonal. So I have all of my blocks right here. I was so pleased to have all of those finished this morning. It was a lot of fun doing that. And now I have all of the sashing to add. So I'm going with the black sashing as they used in the pattern. And um, I, I feel like I have maybe a few more hours worth of work to finish the quilt top. It's really fun. As you can see from the block, it looks like there's triangles in there, but because of the clever cutting and piecing, you're actually just sewing strips in a straight line and it's really easy to line everything up. I pressed all my seams open, but you can press however you like. And then of course I'm pressing my seams toward the sashing to make the sashing stick out of it. The nice thing about this quilt pattern also is here's all of my leftover cuttings. And in the pattern, you actually use these leftovers. And let me show you the picture from the pattern. So again, this is the, the cover. There's full color diagrams. As you can see, I wrote a bit on my instructions, but there's two bonus projects. So those leftover cuttings right here will make this mini quilt and a pillow. So I think the mini quilt's about 36 inches squared. Oh, it says right on here, 39 inches. Um, and I. I really bought this pattern for the mini quilt because it really caught my eye. I love the bright colors with the black background. And I will try to get these other two projects finished later in the week after I finish my quilt top. So again, this quilt pattern is called Spinning Rail Fence. It's from Shabby Fabrics. And the link is in the description if you'd like to find out more or if you want to see the quilt kit. All right, let me put this ruler on the side. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. What are you making this weekend, especially if for some people, this might be a long weekend. Um, just jot down in the comments if you're working on a quilt, maybe you're working on a bag. I saw a lot of Oreo bags uh, being made this weekend as well. So just let me know in the comments and I'm curious to see what you're making. Okay, the fabric that I added to my stash this week is actually not a quilting cotton, but a bark cloth fabric. I purchased these from Shabby Fabrics and they came in the mail either Friday or Saturday. So I'll show you in the side view I just ordered this one print, um, but I really love it because um, these right here are all metallic, so they're really beautiful. The fabric is Outback Wife. It's designed by Gertrude Maid, and it's the company that produces it is called Ella Blue Fabrics. And so this is sort of a vintage looking floral print. Um, there's other designs in the fabric collection, but this one was just my favorite. I feel like the camera doesn't do the fabric justice. It's so beautiful. Let me show you some of the other, other colors that I purchased as well. This was my number one favorite. I just, I, I felt like the yellow and the, the cream colored background was a little bit of an uncommon fab color combination in my fabric stash. And then the last two that I picked up was this sort of mauve print with the gold and then this green fabric. When, when I was looking at the photos online, I didn't realize the background was sort of like a hunter green, but it's really beautiful. So it's got a combination of the large floral prints as well as the smaller floral, which is really nice. I, I made a little clutch last week using the small floral and the leftovers with the large prints. I felt like I can make a really nice front of a bag. So I'm really excited to use these. The bark cloth has, I don't know if you can see it from the camera, but it has a little bit of a different weave to it. That might be a better representation. Um, because I didn't, not that it's stretchy, but I didn't want it to warp at all while I was working with it. So I interfaced this first to Pellon Shape Flex before attaching it to the foam, and at least in the project that I made. And I've worked with bark cloth in the past, and I've treated it that same way. So again, I just attached it to Pellon Shape Flex to take out any warping, and then attached it to the foam interfacing for my project. So I have another question for you. Let me know in the comments, since bark cloth is not a super common substrate, at least for quilts and bag making. Have you ever used bark cloth fabric before? So let me know in the comments. Maybe you've used it for upholstering a chair or a couch. 
Maybe you've used it for curtains. Just let me know in the comments. I'm curious to know if you've used any of this lovely bark cloth fabric before. Another fabric that I added to my stash, um, my friend Bronwyn, who is very active in the Facebook group. Bronwyn lives in New Zealand, and if you watch our Instagram live shows on Tuesday, you might have seen Bronwyn check in on the split screen a few weeks ago, but Bronwyn sent me this lovely gray wool fabric. I was looking for a gray wool to use for the Kennedy bag video that we have planned for sometime soon. I wanted sort of a neutral looking bag, but also since the Kennedy bag is a messenger bag, something that could double for either a man or a woman. So I'm gonna go with this gray wool for the main fabric, the body of the bag, and then the straps and the accents. I thought maybe a black cork fabric to go with the gray. So thanks Bronwyn. Bronwyn sent some goodies for us as well, some candies from New Zealand. So that was really fun to try out candies from someplace we've never been before. Um, today, since it was a holiday weekend, uh, I went with my family to my grandmother's house. My grandmother barbecued. We had, how hot was it today, Danny? I think it was like 94 or 95 degrees yeah. outside. It was very hot, so we stayed inside. Um, my grandma had all the um, chairs at her picnic table set outside, but nobody, nobody wanted to go out there since it was so hot. Uh, we went for ice cream after lunch, and um, it was a great day, but the heat it's funny in Chicago we seem to go from winter to summer there's like almost always no spring it's either you're wearing a winter jacket or you're inside and the air conditioning's on so we had a hot day I know there's other parts of the country that have that heat as well but it was it was kind of a shock like our first really super hot day of the year this year um, Danny's favorite part of the show is when we ask for our call out for the bag ladies and bag dudes to let us know in the comments so if you are, just type it in the comments for us, either bag lady or bag dude. I know I'm a super proud bag lady and I enjoy the support of the online community that I feel like the term bag lady is bringing. So thank you so much for chiming in on that call out for the comments of the bag lady or bag dude. My book review for this week is a book called Sewn Animal Heads. So I'm gonna step over to the side camera and flip through this book. I just picked it up. It looks like it just came out recently. And I love the projects in it as well as uh, the illustrations. So again, it's called Sew Animal Heads. The author is Vanessa Munsi. And there's a lot of projects in this book, which I was really surprised. I thought it was gonna be maybe five or six projects, but there's a huge amount in this book. Um, the introduction, there's just some basics about, oh, let me show you all of the nice big photos of the projects. So I was looking at these with my daughter, Violet, and I, I was asking her, which one would you make first? I told her I'd probably make the elephant first because I love, I love the fabric choices in these as well because they're not bright fabrics, they're more neutral colors. And I, the suiting in this unicorn is really cute as well. Or the fox, I think I'd probably make the fox as well. That chicken is kind of hilarious too. So the nice thing about this book is that I've never seen in a non-quilting book, but still sewing related, I've never seen so many illustrations. So there's a fabric layout, which I, I don't commonly find in sewing books. And look, you can see how many illustrations there are for all of the projects. So really detailed, especially if you've never made a stuffed animal before, which I really haven't. Um, I can see this book being a really big help. I sort of flipped through the projects already, so I'll just kind of quickly skip through the rest of the book because you saw all of the projects at the beginning, I believe. I'm not sure if we saw this moose. Let me flip back to it. That rabbit was pretty cute too. The pig. A giraffe. So there's tons of things in here to fill whatever your taste is as far as the stuffed animals. There's my elephant right there. Um, there's templates in the back of the book, but you do need to enlarge them by 200%, which is, I was a little disappointed in that, I have to admit, but I can just take this over to the local um, Office Max or Staples, your local office supply store, and get those printed off. So not a huge problem, but I'll be sure if I print those templates out to make sure I transfer them to probably Quil Quilter's Template Plastics so I don't have to ever have those reproduced again because that's uh, well, just an extra trip before starting on the project. So again, the book was called Sewn Animal Heads, and it's all lots of cute things to make for plush that you can hang on your wall. 
Okay, so my demo this week is for Iron On Vinyl, and I had a, an email a few weeks ago from Rabia, and she asked if I could show how to attach clear Iron On Vinyl to fabric. So I made earlier this morning, because I'm last minute as always, I made a few projects using the clear Iron On Vinyl. So let me show you in the side view. Danny's gonna change to the side view camera. Yesterday, oh, we're getting a little bit of blur. Do you wanna switch back to the front camera? One sec. Okay. Sorry, technical difficulties. Hang on one second. There you go. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, we stopped at um, Walgreens yesterday and picked up a few bags of candy, which my kids were super excited about, but <laughs> um, I got three different kinds and the bags were all different sizes, but I attached um, the iron on vinyl to the front of the package. So I cut the front of the bag off as well as the back of the bag. I attached the iron on vinyl to the front of the package and the back, obviously. I decided not to line the project, but because I was not planning on lining it, I also attached the clear iron on vinyl to the back of the candy wrapper as well, just because I wanted it to be super stable. Um, not that a candy wrapper is um, not waterproof or water resistant, but I just wanted it to be a substantial project without having to add a lining fabric. So um, I'm pretty pleased with the results. I tried two different brands of the iron on vinyl. I'll talk about the differences in the brands in a minute. Because a candy wrapper comes from the store and it's not flat like a piece of ironed fabric would be, um, there's little sort of, as you can see, it's not perfectly flat, but I feel like it's a pretty accurate representation of the candy bag. And I have an M&M's wrapper that I just have the vinyl on just so you could see what it looks like without being in the project. So let me show you the two products that I tried out. So the first one is Pellon Vinyl Fuse and I got the clear gloss finish. This product also comes in the matte, which I think I will enjoy the matte a lot more, but it, I had a hard time finding these to begin with. So this one's the clear gloss. And the second product that I tried out was Heat and Bond, and this is their Iron On Vinyl. So very similar products. Um, the directions for applying them are pretty much the exact same for both of them. Let me pull them out of the package just so I can show you kind of what they look like out of the package. So the Heat and Bond has paper on one side, and you can see the shininess, the clear vinyl on the other side. They're both paper back, so you would just remove the paper. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And the Pellon Vinyl Fuse doesn't have the, the grid like the um, Heat and Bond product does, but it's still paper back. So the, the Pellon product has, as you can see, the one side is shiny, that's the clear vinyl, and the other side is the paper. So the difference between these two, which I noticed immediately when you peel back the paper of the Heat and Bond products, the clear vinyl feels a little bit thinner than the Pellon product. The Pellon product feels a little bit more substantial. It kind of reminds me of a covering on um, like a tablecloth or something similar. Um, the difference that I found when working with these products and um, this one I made using the Pellon Vinyl Fuse and this one I made using the Heat and Bond I noticed when I turned the pouch right side out because I obviously I sewed my pieces right sides together is that there was a I noticed a little bit of a separation in the Heat and Bond product and um, I confirmed my suspicions when I looked online and I saw some reviews online of that happening where certain areas of the vinyl when you turn a product right side out come a little bit unattached. I think if I hadn't read those reviews I might not if you don't look super closely you can't immediately tell but um, Upon further inspection, I noticed the Pellon product looked a little bit more intact as far as areas. I can see a little bit of areas of adhesive, um, which looks like they, they've been become unattached. So that was the main difference um, besides the Pellon being a little bit thicker in the package. I prepared a piece of fabric. Um, this is Quilting Cotton Tula Pink All Stars, and I cut a piece of um, the Pellon Vinyl Fuse the same size just so I can demo it for, for, for you on the show. So the instructions in the package say to set the, the heat on your iron to medium. So for my iron, I normally have it set to cotton, which is seven. The highest setting on my iron is eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that down to four because that would be like a medium setting on my iron. 
and then you're just going to peel back the paper from the clear vinyl. So take your fingernail, it took me um, about 30 seconds or so to get my fingernail in there so I could get it unattached. But you want to just peel the vinyl away from the paper. So here's the vinyl right here and the side that you peel away from the paper is going to be sticky. So that's the side that you would place against the right side of your fabric. And one side of the paper is a little bit shiny. I place the shiny side against the clear vinyl and the more matte looking side of the paper face up so that I would have that side on the iron. So you're just going to iron on the right side of the fabric, obviously the paper between your iron and the vinyl, for about 8 seconds in each area. And you want to keep the iron moving. I know when I present my bag videos I always talk about keeping your iron moving so you don't have an iron imprint. This is especially true with the case of this iron on vinyl because you don't want in your clear vinyl a big imprint of your iron. Okay, so according to the manufacturer's instructions, you're going to remove that paper and repeat this process on the wrong side of the fabric, but only for four seconds. So I'm just going to lay my fabric wrong side facing up. Again, the shiny side of that paper against the wrong side of the fabric. And this time we're only ironing for the four seconds, not eight. Okay, and then ironing on both sides properly sets that vinyl so you get a nice smooth finish. Okay, so then when you remove that paper, this is what it looks like from the right side of the fabric. What I did for when I prepared these uh, pieces this morning is I place, placed something weighted on top, like um, actually fabric would be a good idea. I had a folded piece of fabric to place on here so while it cools, it dries flat. And as you can see, this one has a nice uh, glossy finish. Um, the Pellon matte um, vinyl fuse would be less shiny, it would be more of a matte fabric looking finish. And I like the idea of the matte better than the glossy, but everyone certainly has their own personal preferences. And again, um, those two pouch projects that I showed you, in case you're interested in replicating this with candy pouches or a bag of chips or what have you, I just cut my zipper a total of three quarters of an inch less than the length of the top of the candy bag so that when I sew the zipper to my zipper tabs, um, if you're familiar with sewing zipper pouches, if you have tabs attached, you just don't want to sew through the tabs while you're sewing the sides of the bag. So that's why I cut the zipper three quarters of an inch um, less wide than the top edge of this and I center the zipper. So as I mentioned before, I didn't line it. So then after I sewed the zipper in, I just top stitched the top edge and then I sewed my fabrics right sides together along the sides and the bottom. So it was a really quick, about 10 minute project after I had already prepared the candy wrappers. And I think this is a fun kind of novelty gift. So I was trying to convince my daughter to let me make these for teacher's gifts because she wanted me to make all these elaborate bags. And I was really pleased with how fast these came together. So I'll check with Violet to see if uh, she does want these for the teacher's gifts. So I hope you enjoyed the demo for the clear vinyl. Thank you to Rabia. Arabia for um, suggesting that topic and if you have an idea for a technique that I can demo on Social Sunday just email me. My email is sarah at sosweetness.com and I'm keeping a list. Next Sunday will be how to make a tassel using hardware so that'll be really interesting and fun and again that'll be for next Sunday. Okay, um, whoa, whoa. we'd like to ask you if you enjoy these videos you're watching on Facebook to hit the share button and share this video with your other sewing friends. Regardless if you're watching on either YouTube or Facebook, if you hit the like button which is the thumbs up, that really helps us out a lot. Um, it helps us because um, the more likes and shares we get on our videos, the more YouTube and Facebook will share our videos with new viewers and we always love having new bag ladies and bag dudes join us. So thank you so much for doing that. It really helps us out a lot and we really appreciate it. Okay, before we get to the giveaway, um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions that I can answer live. So either sewing related questions, bag related questions, or if you have a question about a sewing tool, ask your question in, questions in the comments and I'll be answering a few live and then we'll get to the giveaway. I also wanted to let you know the winner of last week's giveaway 
of the set of Allison Glass quilt patterns was Kate Sterling, so congratulations to Kate. I contacted Kate on YouTube and just awaiting her mailing address so I can get her prize off to her. Again, big congratulations to you, Kate. And we have another giveaway at the end of the show, but let me get to some questions. Danny's gonna put a few questions on the screen and I'll answer some of those live. All right, Danny, some good questions. Um, and I, I hope you enjoyed that um, little demo for these uh, candy Skittles and the Starburst pouch. My son's gonna be getting this M&Ms because m ms is his favorite candy. So the first question is, Lorraine says, how is June Cork Club coming? Um, so Danny and the kids will be packing up the Cork Club packets tomorrow. We meant to do it um, on Saturday, but the weekend sort of got away fr from us. So tomorrow's the day, um, as it's a holiday, um, I'm putting them to work and I'll be printing shipping labels. So um, we're, we're gonna try to get the packets out in the mail this Tuesday. Um, Liz says, is there a pattern for your t-shirt? So I believe, I made a couple of these a few years ago. I believe the pattern was by Christine Haynes. The name of the patterns is, escape, is escaping me, but if you check the Christine Haynes website, it's a, a knit pattern. And I made this using art gallery fabrics. Um, this fabric was designed by um, Dana from Made Every Day. Um, Dana also produces videos on YouTube for fun um, quick projects and so I use this fabric and I feel like it's a really great summer fabric because it has all the names of the ice creams on the fabric and it's a knit which I, I really love to wear um, summer or any time of year anyway. Another question, do you have a video explaining how to add a zipper pull to leftover zipper fabric? So that is on my list for not this Sunday, the Sunday after because it was suggested to me in an email I think Jen suggested that in an email. So I have it on my list for um, two weeks from today. I'll, I'll be demoing that on Social Sunday. Kyla says, are pattern templates included for each pattern in your two books? That's a great question. There are templates in either book. So the first book called Big City Bags, the templates are actually printed on the, the pages of the book. So you can either just copy them or photocopy them. No need to enlarge them. The second book, Windy CD Bags, has a pull-out page in the back of the book. Um, again, those templates are at 100%, so you don't need to enlarge those either. Um, but either way, um, the pattern pieces are provided for anything that's not a square or a rectangle. Mary um, says, love your pressing mat. Does the heat transfer to the surface underneath? Would it harm wood? So it does not because the pressing mat is, uh, Danny, would you say this is about a half inch in thickness, maybe three quarters? That's exactly. Okay, Danny's gonna pull out his uh, measuring tape and verify for me the thickness of this mat. It's half uh, inch. Half inch, okay, so it's half inch in thickness. I have it actually on, um, this is not granite, is it Danny? What's it our- It is quartz. Okay, we have a quartz countertop in the sewing room, so I have the mat on the quartz countertop. Um, it doesn't make the countertop, um, it doesn't heat the countertop up, but it's really nice for, especially when I was pressing my quilt blocks, because the, the wool keeps the heat on the mat for a little bit longer after the iron leaves it. So I feel like my blocks press a little bit more flat and nice and smooth. So I really like using the mat. It's by Wooly Felted Wonders. That's the website where you can find these. I, I use the 17 inch size, but they have other sizes as well. I think the smallest is eight and a half inches. Connie says, what, fit, what foot did you use on the candy bag? So because the vinyl that you're attaching to the candy bags is um, sticky, not sticky, but you know, it's um, like vinyl or leather or cork. I used a Teflon foot. You can also use a walking foot, um, but the Teflon foot for sure really helps because it helps the foot glide across this uh, stickiness. Your regular metal foot would just, you would just be sewing in one spot. So the Teflon foot definitely helped a lot with this project. Diana says, um, Sarah, any help on sewing the bottom of your dumpling bag? I made one yesterday and had to redo the corner six times. Um, if you want to email me, I'm happy to help. We do have a video that I posted on the YouTube channel for the dumpling bag, but if you have a specific question, um, feel free to email me. And Diana was asking about my Sizzix dumpling die. So the Sizzix machine um, just cuts out your fabric and interfacing for the project. So it makes sewing a little bit faster just because you don't have to cut everything out by hand. Teresa says, have you found that digitally printed fabric wears as well um, as the regular printed quilting cotton? So I do have some digitally printed fabric in my stash. Hoffman Fabrics is one company that produces really beautiful digital prints. 
Um, I haven't found that it wears um, out, but then again, I haven't had any bags long enough to see over time, like several years down the road, um, if the colors wear. Um, my suspicion would be no, that they wouldn't, but I, I don't have any firsthand personal knowledge of a bag that I've had more than a year uh, with the digital prints. Actually, I, th I might have one behind me. Oh yeah, let me grab one of the digital prints. I can reach it right here from here. Okay, so here's one of the digital prints that I have in my stash and it's sort of like a, a city print. As you can see, it's really big. Um, this is from Alexander Hen Henry, I believe this one was a digital one, it feels like it. Um, and I feel like with the digital prints, they can get really elaborate. Like I saw a digital print of a unicorn, I think I saw a jungle scene, so they were super elaborate and I felt like they were works of art. Um, anyway, that's, that's all I know about the subject. Um, Lauren says, can you please send me some good baby juju vibes that this baby's coming out soon? I'm so over being pregnant. I miss sewing and it's sucking my sojo. Didn't you, didn't Lauren say last week that she was ready to have her baby any day now? It was Lauren, right? Danny's nodding his head. So I hope I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that tomorrow's the day. And tonight, uh, tonight oh, Danny says tonight. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. <laughs> um, Cheryl says, um, okay, I have a question. I bought one of those mats and sometimes it smells like wet dog when it gets hot. Does anyone else have that issue? So. I have to admit, um, I have two of these mats. So one side of the mat I only use for spritzing water. I don't know if you can see, but it kind of turned brown. And I think that was scorch marks from spritzing water and uh, my flatter spray. So one side I only use for spritzing water and the other side I never spritz anything on it. I just use it for pressing. So I'm not sure if that's why your mat is smelling. No, oh, my mat smells pretty good, but I use my flatter spray on it. So I have like a pineapple scented flatter spray so maybe that's why mine doesn't smell right now but um, you might consider that for your mat if you haven't used the second side just conserve the second side for the the pressing only and not the spraying um, Emily said did you order your embroidery machine I actually Danny and I went to the store Wednesday I think it was this past week I purchased the brother and novice NQ 1600 E it's still sitting in the box right there I could see it out of the corner of my eye because I told Danny um, he should unpack it, learn how to use it, work through all the kinks of the uh, learning process, and then teach me how to use it. And so I don't have to go through the stress of learning a new machine. So I was sort of putting that on him. So I'm gonna see if he'll do that for me this week. We'll see. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll pull it out on the show as soon as we get it figured out. Um, Sonia says, would it be difficult to put a strap on the Baker Street bag from the side to side of the bag instead of two of them on the front and the back? Um, it would be fairly easy. You could either put the sides, uh, for sure you're going to put the side strap on the top of the side panel. You could either sew the strap into the seam, kind of like you would have done for attaching the strap to the front of the Baker Street bag, or if you'd like to add some tabs with some hardware and attach the strap that way, you could do that. So. Either way, um, you'll attach the strap or the tab before you start assembling the bag when the side panel is still flat. So that would be really easy to do. Maybe I'll put together, I was planning on putting together a tutorial for attaching tabs and a strap to, to any project. So maybe that video will be helpful for attaching your strap to your Baker Street bag. Um, Marsha says, do you know when the court club may be open again? Um, Cork Club is, we've got two months left in the current Cork Club. We'll probably wait till either the end of the year or early next year to open up to new subscribers. Um, just because it was a, a large workload for us and um, my cousin who works for us, I, I think he needs a little bit of break. He's cutting a lot of those little squares and the, um, yeah. Um, and we also had a, a, a really short club planned for the glitter vinyl that we sell. That will probably be a two month club just because we don't have as many varieties as we do for the cork fabric. But we'll let you know on social media and on the live shows as soon as we open to new subscribers for the cork club. And if we can get it done sooner than end of the year, uh, we'll do the best we can and we'll let you know. Lisa says, do you like flatter better than Mary Ellen's best press? So my flatter, if you're not familiar with it, let me grab it because it's right over here. This is the flatter spray. Um, it's this one is a starch, um, starch-free smoothing spray. I believe the Mary Ellen's is actual starch, 
Um, so I, I feel like they're a little bit different. I like this because it's it's not sticky. Um, I get a scented usually. Um, this one's fig. I've had pineapple before. They have unscented. Um, I just use it for if I'm pulling out a fabric that I need to get wrinkles out or I like using it when I'm attaching it to the fabric to interfacing because it makes my sewing room smell really good. So um, I think that's the main difference. This is not actually starch spray. I believe Best Press is starch, but correct me if I'm wrong. Danny will put a comment on the screen in case I was wrong. Um, Dee says, what is your go-to bag for everyday use? So lately, a few times, I in the past week, I used the Hyacinth bag that I just made um, for our video. So it's a brown bag with uh, bikes printed on it, and I used brown cork. That's the bag. I really love using that bag in the summer because it's flat. It has a lot of storage space underneath the flat for my credit cards and cash. And then there's a little bit of storage. Well, not a little bit, but there's storage space on the inside, but it's not a huge bag, so it doesn't hurt my shoulder when we're out and about during the summer. Um, so that's the bag. Violet and I have been trading off, to be honest. Some days Violet uses the bag, other days I use the bag. So um, Diana says, won't the shop give you a free lesson to learn your embroidery machine? They did offer, we do get a free embroidery class because we purchased the machine. Um, they haven't released their schedule yet for those classes, and so I don't know when we'll be going. Um, they didn't give us any kind of estimate on that, but um, I think Danny's really rather anxious to get the machine going, so we might start using it before we get a chance yes. to go to the class. He says yes. Yes, so yes, yes. He wanted to embroider himself all these um, collared uh, shirts tell with so sweetness right on them. Yeah, actually, he, he told me to tell you this story, but as soon as we purchased that machine on the way home, he wanted to stop at the store and get all these plain colored black um, collared oh, shirts uh, so he could embroider So Sweetness, or is that all you were gonna embroider or were you gonna embroider other things besides that? Yeah, like that? the name of my, my name, So Sweetness logo. With his name, he said, um, on the shirt, so. <laughs> Sarah's like, I would not wear a shirt like that. Yeah. <laughs> He's so funny, because I told him I would not wear a, a collared shirt with So Sweetness on it, it's just not my style. No, I would say collared shirt for you. What would I? Like what a v-neck pipe for you. Okay, he says v-neck is more my style, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Denise says, what is the fabric on the red bag behind you with the trees on it? I love it. So, oh, sorry. It's opposite direction than what, when I'm, what I'm seeing on the screen. So, um, Denise is talking about this bag. This is the Renegade bag. This is a hand-printed fabric that I purchased several, several years ago from a company in Australia called Ink and Spindle. So, I checked recently on their website. They don't have this particular print, or at least last time I checked, but they have an, uh, another selection of prints on the site right now. Again, the, call, the company was called Ink and Spindle, and um, the fabric is from Australia. I had this fabric for maybe seven or eight years. Like, I couldn't bear to use it because uh, it was a little bit pricier than regular Colton cotton, but when I cleaned my sewing room, I thought, why am I saving all these fabrics for never sewing with? Let's just sew with them and get them put into bags and um, having them made into something special. So that's what I decided to do. All right, uh, Donna says, of your paid patterns, which is the easiest? Um, actually, when people ask for the easiest, I usually recommend uh, two free patterns in videos. So either the Baker Street bag or the Easy Leather Hobo bag. A lot of, since so many people have made the Oreo bag, which is also a free pattern in video, I would suggest that one as well. You can find those on the YouTube channel or on my website. Um, if you're looking for one of the paid patterns that's the easiest, maybe the, the Tudor bag maybe. Um, that's a nice uh, sort of tote bag with a bunch of details that you can either add or subtract, like a front zippered pocket, an adjustable strap, there's uh, front handles as well. So you kind of get to pick and choose what details you add into the pattern based on what you want, but it's, it's all in the pattern instructions for, for the Tudor bag. Scrapping Audra says, I, I'm a newbie bag lady, have only made the Baker Street bag. I would love to make the hobo bag next, but I would like to have a zipper closure instead. Would love to hear your recommendations. So I don't, that bag just has a magnetic snap closure. Um, I feel like I've had a lot of people ask for a zipper closure for that bag. So maybe I will make another version in quilting cotton, but with a zipper uh, as the top closure because the, c the construction is going to be a bit different so I feel like it's not an easy answer like I can't just tell you all right do A and B and then the zipper will be in uh, in the easy leather hobo bag so I'll add that to my list um, for the zipper closure and I'll make it in quilting cotton so people have another option 
Um, I'll let you know on social media and on the live show when I have that, but it's on my list. I'll, I'll add it to my list. Um, Buster Bun says acrylic templates. I We don't currently, unfortunately, I'm totally slacking on this. Uh, we did want to have acrylic templates produced at least for the minikins because the minikins are smaller projects and people are making, I feel like, a lot for craft fairs or for gifts. Um, still in, need to investigate that for as far as pricing and uh, so we can get them produced uh, as cost effective as possible so they're not super expensive acrylic templates. Uh, Rabia says, do you always pre-wash your bag fabric? I, uh, what's that saying? Uh, do as I say, not as I do. I think that's the saying. So for my, for my bags, generally I'm using fabric that I'm familiar with, like tulip pink fabric or from familiar manufacturers, and I kind of know how the fabric will react. My tip is if you're ever buying a fabric where you're not sure of the source or you're just not sure of the, I don't want to say quality, but um, what type of fabric or where it's from, always pre-wash it, especially if you're not sure because fabric shrinking in a bag after you've uh, attached the interfacing or while you're attaching interfacing is not good because that can affect um, the outcome of the finished bag. Um, but I remember years ago when I first started sewing bags, I did an experiment with a fabric uh, that I was familiar with. I think it was an Amy Butler fabric. Um, so we measured the fabric before we washed it, like exactly one yard of fabric, um, but we took the exact measurements, threw it in the washer, dryer, and then when it came out, it was like a little bit over an eighth of an inch in total in shrinkage. So that's why I'm confident in not washing the fabric from the bags. But like I said, if you're not sure, especially pre-wash the fabric and the recommendation is usually you should treat the fabric as you would the finished bag. So if you plan on putting the finished bag in the washer or dryer, that's what you should do when you're pre-washing or pre-treating your fabric. Was that another question on the screen or mm -hmm. I was talking too long, sorry about yes, that. Sure. Joanne says, I went to eat with my friend the other day and she saw my Baker Street bag. She could not believe I made it and said Vera had nothing on me. Yay, I love to hear that. I super love uh, hearing stories like that when you either go to the quilt shop or you see friends and family and they don't believe that you made the bag. That's awesome. And I feel like, uh, not to be a bag lady snob, but I feel like what we can make or the possibilities for bag making, especially projects that I've seen in the Facebook group, are way better than things you could buy in the store especially um, not to uh, talk bad about someone, but I, I feel like we could do better than Vera Bradley bag. So let's go for it and uh, we can do it. I know we can. Yolanda says, do you ever go to the fabric store when stressed just to look and touch fabric? Um, I feel like when I'm stressed out, the worst time to go to the fabric store is then because I'm just gonna buy a whole ton of stuff and I don't really have any more room. Danny can attest to that. There's no room on these shelves behind me unless I get rid of uh, the display bags. So trying to control my spending, but as you can see when I showed that bar cloth that I just bought um, and got in the mail this past week, um, I'm not doing so great with the, the self-control. Judy says, this is my first social and I'm enjoying it. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, I hope you'll come back again next week and let me know if there's a tutorial demo that you'd like me to share on a future episode. Lois says, will you ever make something for AccuQuilt instead of Sizzix? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I do have a contract with Sizzix, and so since AccuQuilt is a competing company, um, as far as in the near future, I won't be designing anything for AccuQuilt, but if you're not familiar with either of those companies, they're both companies that produce uh, die cutting machines and dies to cut out fabric. I think AccuQuilt is more strong, not more strong, but their catalog is more directed to quilters, so like um, cuts for making quilts, either strips or very specific um, shapes like Drunkard's Path or so on. And Sizzix has um, a, a more of a range of projects like um, plush toys, um, bags since I make accessories for them, uh, wool. So there's a different, there's, there's a more diverse offering for Sizzix, um, just my personal opinion. Lauren says, I just got some waterproof canvas and used it for the lining of my Oreo last night. First time using it and still debating what I think. Have you used waterproof before? If so, what do you think of it? So I think you're talking about like, like a laminated fabric. So I've used both laminated canvas before and laminated quilting cotton. I have to admit the first time I used the laminated canvas, I didn't know, I just didn't know any better. I used my regular sewing machine foot and it was the probably the worst project I've ever had to complete because 
using a regular foot on laminated fabric, it like the foot doesn't want to move. So I thought it was just me, and then I sucked at sewing, but I just didn't have the right tools or tool, just like one single tool. Um, but I do enjoy projects with laminate, um, either quilting cotton or laminated canvas. Um, I, it's just something different to add to the projects, and they're great for you know lunch boxes or cosmetic bags because you could just wipe them clean, especially if it's something that you're keeping in the bathroom, like a cosmetic bag might be kept. Bonnie says, I've had ladies come up to me and ask where I got my Vera B bag, and it is always one of your bags I'm carrying. That's so funny, and that's that's really fun to hear. Um, and I feel, like, yeah, the, the quality of a handmade bag, um, you know, Baker Street bag or whatever you're making, I feel like it's way better. But again, I'm probably a little bit biased. Cheryl says, a true fabricaholic has no control. If you like like it, have to buy it. Can you see yourself passing up Tula Pink's new line or her next? So I, I will have to buy, I, Danny knows already, every single Tula Pink fabric line, I just buy it. There's no question. Um, I love them all. Of course, I have certain favorites, you know, if you're comparing all the fabric lines, but they're all my favorite if you're comparing them to what else is out there. Uh, that's just me, though. Lauren says waterproof canvas. Okay. Um, do you mean like a... Maybe the next one. Duck? Oh, she hasn't... I didn't have to interface it. Okay, maybe like a duck cloth, like an outdoor... Um, like peop what people might use for outdoor upholstering or like an outdoor umbrella. I'm not sure if that was what you meant. Sorry about that. Um, Debbie says, please show how the front pocket gets assembled on the satellite. Um, so uh, the satellite bag has a PDF pattern with full color photos, but we also produced a video for it. So if you feel like you're more of a visual learner, we have the video available for that and it's on the website right now. It's in the satellite bag product listing. All right, so Danny, I'm gonna have you pick out one more question and then I'm going to get to the giveaway because I've been forgetting lately about the giveaway. Danny's had to remind me lately. So That's it, we just end it right there. <laughs> Let me grab my uh, giveaway stuff while you put one more. Are you gonna put one more question up there? I guess so. Okay, he says he guesses so. Uh, Kathy says, how are you planning on quilting your quilt top, your Juki machine, or a free arm quilter? So the quilt I'm working on that I started yesterday, I admit that I'm going to go the lazy route and just going to send it off to a long arm quilter. I might get an all over design just so that it's cheaper but still looks cool. Um, I was thinking about it this morning, I was like, should I, should I have something really unique long armed on this quilt or not? And I think looking at past quilts that I have, that we have in our home, I don't necessarily stare at the quilting like every day, like, wow, that's, oh, I love that quilting. I mean, like, I do love it, but it's not like something that I notice on a daily basis. So I might go the cheaper route and just have like an all over design. Um, but I, I will not be quilting it myself because I would rather work on another bag video for you guys. So just, just to be honest here, um, the giveaway for this week is a few rolls of cork fabric. I'm just gonna have Danny cut to the side view so I don't have to pick these guys up. Um, but these are uh, cork rolls from the shop in various sizes. So these are just end cuts that are, they're still 54 inches long. They're just uh, varying lengths of pieces. So this is the rose gold, which is, I feel like photos and videos don't do this justice. This is the candy red, which is really popular. A newer one, um, this is natural with metallic rainbow, so if I kind of wiggle it to one side, you can see the rainbow. Jeans blue, which is at the top as far as sellers go, a lot of people are buying the jeans blue, and this is another natural with metallic, this one's with gold. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway, um, my question was, what would you make with that iron-on vinyl that I showed you uh, previously with the demo? Let me know in the comments. That will be your entry for the giveaway and I'll choose a random winner at the end of the day this Saturday. Again, the question is, what would you make with iron on vinyl? So would you make a lunchbox, cosmetic bag? Would you make just like a little simple zipper pouch? All you have to do is let me know in the comments. So thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. My demo again for next Sunday will be how to make a tassel using hardware. And I'll see you again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time. Happy sewing.